probably about 8,500 feet above sea level, uh, located maybe about, uh, let me see here, 30 miles or so outside of Denver, Colorado. Not sure if the camera is picking up here on the screen the uh, road behind me, but just filming off the edge of the Central City Parkway, getting ready to roll into Central City and the uh, neighboring town right next to it, which is Blackhawk, Blackhawk, Colorado. And uh, Blackhawk, Colorado and Central City are one of the few designated gaming areas in the state of Colorado. So uh, casinos and table gaming slots and all that kind of stuff, and, and poker specifically, uh, only exists in a few locations in the state that are designated for gaming. Basically, these are old historic mining towns that wanted to have uh, slot machines or other games kind of in their front lobbies, doors, or whatever to kind of have some additional revenue. But uh, that was way back probably, I want to say, in the mid-early 90s, and that has changed. Basically, now it's got a couple of uh, resort-style hotels with casinos in them, uh, poker rooms, slots, uh, pretty much anything that you could want. The one thing that's probably different about Colorado, uh, and we'll talk about this in future videos or future recordings, the uh, gaming here, when it first started off and gaming was legally allowed or in the, the current state that it is, uh, you can only have a maximum of, of a $5 wager. So if you're playing $5 blackjack, dollar slots, 50 cent slots, whatever, I mean, it's kind of no big deal. But when you're playing poker, uh, having a, a game capped at the maximum betting increment of $5 is not very interesting, um, maybe even kind of insane the way uh, the way it was actually the way it was actually was actually played. So let me see here. Probably about maybe like uh, eight nine years ago, 2008 2009, uh, that actually changed, and the betting increment was changed to $100. So what we have is betting that can occur from anywhere from. Uh, uh, $1, $2 blinds in your poker game with a maximum betting increment of 100. So you can bet um, 30, 40, up to that 100, but you can't, for example, just cold throw out there 300 or have an all-in. So effectively what we're talking about is, is spread, limit, spread limit poker, where the, the betting can happen within a range of certain values. So there's also, in terms of poker, other games. Uh, mainly uh, you'll find some smaller limit games like a uh, 1020, um, a 510 that might run, um, but 3060, 3060 with a half kill that goes up to 5100, uh, traditional fixed structure limit, is the other big game that runs. So we're getting ready to roll into town. We'll probably take some more photos as we kind of go along, but uh, otherwise it's cold. Time to get in the car and uh, see what happens. So best of luck to us. played a session, or at least part way through my session. Had some pretty reasonable hands that turned out to be draws, and uh, one was a little aggressive, but they paid off. So I think we can put those in the lab and kind of take a look at them and overpair, or set of overcards that got there against um, an overpair to the board. A uh, called off a three bet after opening to a very small, just basically a mid raise. So I don't think that was well, we'll just put it in the put it in PO solver and uh, see how it see how it turns out. And uh, so we'll take a look at those two hands in terms of strategy. Meant to record something earlier from the garage and uh, didn't to kind of show kind of like the lay of the land. Kind of what Blackhawk basically kind of kind of looks like. So I'll just kind of see if I can cut across the street here without dying. We'll just take a look real quick. All right. See what, see what's going on here. So uh, let me just turn on here. So this is Maristar. So this is the uh, basically the main casino where most of the poker games actually run. We have the uh, the lodge over there. We have Mardi Gras. Lodge used to have a poker room, but they closed it down. Mardi Gras directly across the street over there, and then that little kind of 
arrow over there, that sign is changing the red, that's actually Gates. Maybe we'll take a look at Gates uh, a little bit later. But they actually host uh, HPT, MSPT, basically 1K tournament buy-ins uh, that go on across the street over there. So pretty active area. If you actually go uh, up the street past the Ameristar, you got some smaller casinos. They're a little more historic, basically just like slot machines, maybe some table games. And then down the mountain there, we'll take a look at this someday later, you've got the um, You've got the aisle, which which appear which appears there. So that's pretty cool. That's just another major major casino. So anyhow, that's kind of where we're at and what we're doing in the session, and we'll break that down and take take a look at it. Um, you know, the software we'll use. I'll probably talk about this in another segment here. Will be PO Solver. It's a um, equilibrium solver for Hold'em. Uh, computes massive game state calculations, and then with that. Um, you know, basically look at equities, values, recommended bet sizing, so on and so forth. So all the equilibrium and GTO concepts, people talk about it a different way, but it's, it's kind of basically your, your magic math machine set up and geared for, uh, for, for Hold'em. So that's just a little bit of the town there behind me and kind of where we're going and uh, going to go back in at the buffet and uh, continue on and see how we do. Go us. Alright, let's see here. Done for the night. Walked out down here actually at the uh, far east end of uh, Black Hawk. So let's see what they got around us here. Another casino behind us. There's another one there. Actually, that's yeah, kind of parking. They've got Isle and then Monarch down there, which all have gaming floors, table games, hotels, everything attached to it kind of stand here and kind of scope out the historic train and talk about the session for a second. Uh, finished, played for about nine hours, finished up 900 bucks or 915 to be exact. So that's always a good thing. Um, let's see here, other than that, probably the biggest thing, a lot of that work was actually done early, uh, playing in some three bet pots uh, and played them well, or I shouldn't say necessarily played them well, but played them reasonably well enough, scooped them on out and then um, ran good in some spots, so so it was good. So I think after this, I'll, I'll do a little, maybe a little strat, break down uh, some play in some of those three bet pots and how the that composes together. Uh, talk about some hands, kind of in a general sense, some ranges, blah, 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 and uh, hopefully something that's interesting, and then we'll uh, be back and hopefully do it again, see how it goes. And that's, uh, that's gonna be the session, all right? Later. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the hands, um, not in terms of the exact hands, in terms of how the, the money went in or kind of the, the execution of the hand performed, but some of the strategy um, in the hands that I played from week two uh, in 2017. Uh, and these are basically three bet pots. And we're looking at PO Solver for kind of the, the best approximation of the solution. Um, and I'll talk about what it means in terms of approximation, but we will be looking at this in, in PO Solver. And the main decision points for some of these three bet pots, I think, really comes from preflop and how raises are executed and what we're doing with the raises and how we are uh, constructing ranges. So I, I want to show this screen here in PO Solver, which is the preflop uh, solution. Um, and if you haven't watched the intro intro video to PO Solver, please feel free to do. This is the pre-flop screen that we skipped there, and we'll just talk about this for a few brief seconds. We have an out-of-position range that we're defined here, and it's easiest to see because we have all of the, or not all of them, but we have quite a few um, aces, uh, suited aces through here. We have an in-position range that's narrower. It's basically 12.8% of the total range available to us, so basically um, 100 160 or 170 combinations, but it does not have as many suited aces through here. And uh, this, so this is basically our our range that's here. Um, effective stacks of a thousand. Uh, we have some dead money in the pot, so on and so forth. This is this is the basic setup. But what's really important, I, I think, through here, the one of the most interesting features. Pardon me, I have a little hiccup. Is going to be how we set up the preflop tree. Um, and what we're doing here is we have a root element. That's what I've clicked right here. Then we have the opportunity to go ahead and raise right here. We have the opportunity to limp. We also have the opportunity to fold. 
Once we've raised, the out of position player has the opportunity to raise to cap, which is 120. And I should say this is all oriented towards towards spread limit. But actually, I, I do think a lot of these preflop concepts do cross over to um, do cross over to no limit to a certain extent, or or what I would call kind of no limit 101. Um, certainly, there's more advanced no limit theory, um, three betting, four betting ranges and strategy, blah, blah, blah. But I do think the transition, pre the preflop transition from spread limit to no limit does make for a good uh, 101 kind of thing. Uh, that being said, we do have the raise to 120. We have the raise to 80, raise to 40. We can call or they can fold. Then likewise as well too, we have re-raises to 220, re-raise to re-raise our one eight, uh, re-raise the 80 bet to cap of 180, um, and then raise to 120. Um, the the items in green here obviously folds or folds, and the, the hand is done. But the items in green here are going to be our, what's called in the software our exit points. And what we mean by an exit point is this is where we start to begin uh, the Post flop, the post flop calculation. So um, at this point, let's consider the line of the root element raised to 20, raised to 120, re raise to 220, then call. Um, what we're doing here in this exact situation, our flop trends and rivers are basically all um, 100 bet caps with with min races because that's that's all we can do. That's basically the structure of the game. Uh, if we look over here at this point, we, um, we where we have a call after the 120, we have a slightly smaller, we have a half pot. Um, we have a half pot opportunity to bet, um, and then likewise we move into the 100 cap, and then we just go through here. So basically it's going to be single bet sizes, single raise sizes with a, with a bunch of different exit points. Um, I, I think that this analysis is is a reasonable approximation. Um, it's probably a little more academic um, rather than concrete in terms of its analysis. It, it basically the takeaways here I think are really food food for thought um, and the reason being here is I don't necessarily think many of our opponents are, are at least in the, the live spread limit game are, are logically thinking about what is my raising range with a 40 bet of, of min and then what is uh, a raising range of 60 to go for 80 total and then what is my raising range with 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 cap um, I, I think that there definitely can be two sizes but I think three gets a bit much uh, I, I don't think most opponents are, are thinking to that to that level, and and maybe you don't even have to, and that that's why it doesn't occur. But it's interesting to throw it through the magic math machine um, and see what the equilibrium strategy comes out to be at the very at the very end. We'll take a look, um, kind of in closing, um, at the tail end of the conversation. We'll take a look at a much simpler model. Um, that goes ahead and, and just has two raise sizes in here and, and really the the whole thought process here becomes uh, what kind of range construction do we need to continue in, to continue in the hand and continue can be a call or continue can be a re-raise so on so on and so forth or and, and then as well too I think the a, a contrasting point is what does it mean or, or how do we react to when we encounter these when we encounter these raise sizes so let's go over here jump over to the jump over to the browser and we'll go ahead and take a look at it here so let's make sure let's make sure we're at our, our root element so this is our basically our tighter um, uh, uh, default range um, and what I mean by default range is this range is if I had to explain spread limit hold them to somebody in 30 minutes to get started you know this is basically um, a starting range of hands for them to, to work from um, and, and again I, I don't think there's anything too insane here. Um, it basically has all of your pairs opportunity to create sets. It has all of your suited broadways for the opportunity to make royal flush. Um, you also have your real, some some stronger offsuit here um, between your ace queen off, ace jack off, ace king queen off, and then you have some suited connectors over here um, at, at a much lower frequency for board coverage um, in later later position. So you can bet your bet your very reasonable very reasonable draws here. So. We go ahead and have we go ahead and have this we go ahead and have this range um, and basically what PO solver is computed here and this is not I think too uh, too obscene or too un unheard of it's basically computing a uh, what would this be was it two to one ratio there basically seventy five percent to almost twenty almost twenty five percent. 70-30 kind of sort of thing. I think this is a common ratio you see if you've read a couple books of No Limit Hold'em in the past couple years um, in terms of with what frequencies you should be taking certain activities. Um, that being said, you know, we're going to be raising 76% of our range here and we're going to be calling with with 20 with 23%. Um, arguably, I think you could even take a pure strategy of just raising, um, you know, this entire range. I should say up to this point, we just basically have um, Fifteen dollars of fifteen dollars of dead money in here with blinds. So basically, you know, the the idea here is that we've gone limp, limp, 
um, and we have some or limp limp limp. We've got some dead money and dead money in the pot, and you're you're going to be raising here for value. So arguably, you could even take a pure strategy of um, raising with this entire raising with this entire range here, rather than only calling with some combinations. Um, or you could actually um, uh, shift to a pure strategy of um, raising with the, the top portion of this range and then just calling with the the bottom part here um, you know fives fours threes and deuces even sixes you know their value is pretty much just set mining um, unless you have late position where you can kind of be a little more bluffy so on and so forth some more advanced strategy concepts but in terms of range composition this is what it's telling us from an equilibrium or I also believe kind of a mixed strategy but again some very quick um, bullet point ideas of how you could construct a range using more of a pure more of a pure strategy so that being said the most common activity that we will be doing is going ahead and raising with uh, 129 basically 130 combinations or 76 percent of that range basically 77 let's go ahead and do that and see see what we see what we have here so this is basically our opponent that has the next opportunity or the next opportunity to ask so again maybe this is somebody out of a out of a blind somebody that's behind you um, the exact software as it's developed here is really developed for heads up scenarios so like I said that's where um, you know even true multi-way equilibrium slash GTO solving um, doesn't exist in a commercial form yet that's accessible these are these are best these are best approximations so if we take a look at what what is what is what is doing here in the range um, you can see there's quite a bit of green so they're going to be calling with 60% of our range if we 60% of their range if we look at over here so that's going to be 172 combinations but let's look at at what they are what they're going to be raising with so um, if we look at kind of the, what is the big bet the raise to 120 um, when there are three sizes available um, they really are not doing the 120 to any significant extent even with aces they're really not raising to the the 120 the 120 cap um, it's 4.3 combinations or 1.5 percent of their range and if you kind of see focus hopefully taking this video and moved it up to full screen um, you know the, the, this raised to 120 is slivered amongst uh, various combinations that you'll do kind of a sub percentage of the time so you can see over here between ace three suited you're going to be raising to 120 with that exact holding about a quarter of the time and then 40% of the time you're going to be raising to 80 um, or calling um, the remaining percent of the time. These should all, these numbers kind of where I'm moving the mouse over here should all add up to one 100 or one uh, for each each of indivi each individual cell it's not like you go ahead and see over here um, we'll just go ahead and move over to aces uh, clearly it's going to be a raise but the greatest frequency is going to be that is going to be that 80 bet um, and that's what that's what we that's what we have here so if we take a, if we take a, if we take a look at that um, we can see that the the main frequency of uh, putting out a big bet happens with aces kings um, ace king suited you can even see it's actually quite interesting here where uh, queen queen um, actually draws off and, and starts to be a, become a call a majority of the time even in a even in a preflop situation jacks um, is is a call in, in most situations as well too um, probably what is interesting if we just take a look at kind of where the colors um, distribute themselves we can kind of see down down over here a seven suited and six five suited uh, do pick up the 80 bet um, of reasonable frequency or a reasonable percentage of time 40 percent 42 percent and then 25 quarter 30 percent um, over here and then you can also see over here on your ace wheel cards um, it goes ahead and uh, distributes itself distributes itself distributes itself over here and I, I think the the main takeaway in terms of how this is distributing is there are clear value raises so your aces your kings and even your ace king suited are, are going to be clear clear value raises um, even your ace queen suited might even be considered a value ace too and, and queen queen but the frequency and, and the number of combinations that you value raise with you should also balance that um, to a reasonable extent with bluffs so um, the concept of that balance you know pretty common pretty common in poker and I think that's what the tool is telling us here is that you're going to want to balance with um, some good bluffs so again uh, eight seven suited six five suited um, are pretty reasonable a certain frequency of the time um, and then obviously your ace wheel uh, combinations over here um, go ahead and do that as well too so like I said I think if we broke this out even further uh, for sake of recording a time not going to do it right now but if we looked at the EV um, you know I can definitely see that there would be a stronger EV with your aces and kings ace king suited um, and then the rest of the hands even where um, 
a good portion of these raises do exist um, and their allocations you know they're probably going to be break even um, but again they're they're good bluffs they they retain equity or can gain equity um, against hands uh, so on so on and so forth so this is again when you start to see the these little slivers of the distribution this is more of a, of a mixed strategy um, in an equilibrium solution vice uh, pure strategies and I think I'll do another video at a later time on mixed versus pure but um, that's kind of again how these how these distribute it so let's go ahead and look at look at the easiest one um, the core premise here is how we how we continue how we continue in hand when I played the previous session on week two um, I got min raised in a spot um, min raised to 40 I mean it, I think the ranges kind of looked um, almost exactly like this but my exact holding was uh, queen 10 suited so root I had queen 10 suited I did open I did open 20 so that's going to be this cell right here um, it was actually queen 10 queen 10 of hearts so I did my raise to 20 um, I got min raised min raised to 40 and then let's take a look here again the, the core premise here is where do we, where do we continue in a hand um, if we take a look here queen 10 suited I mean it's just going to be a call um, such a such a great percentage of the time so what is that if we look over on the right hand side 92.5 percent so if we the queen of hearts 10 of hearts the middle one um, you know we're obviously not going to be re-raising to 120 but we are going to call and, and continue in the hand and, and see a flop um, in that exact hand I did flop uh, a flush draw turned open-ended um, um, and then got there on the open end on the river and, and took down a pretty reasonable pot. Um, the opponent there had probably had King King if I had if I had to guess. I mean, I think that they were honestly value betting and calling um, with with a legit with a legit hand. But in terms of the preflop play, I, I think the um, the mistake there might have been not to raise to a larger sizing because again, what the um, what the solver uh, is showing us here in terms of the game state, the only thing that we're folding here is really going to be our um, uh, king queen offsuit ace jack offsuit um, and we're even not going to be folding it well about 50% of the time we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and find a fold but anything else it really does not force us to go ahead and go ahead and reshape our reshape our range to you know really any significant extent now let's go ahead over here let's go back to our raise and uh, we'll jump back here and we'll say let's go ahead and get raised to 80 now this is where in terms of we open to 20 um, we go ahead and get raised get raised to 80 uh, what are we doing in, in terms of continuing continuing with the hand so um, if we look at our, our raise to 180 certainly our aces and our our aces and our ace king suited and our king king I think those are going to be the obviously the clear value any place you start to see these little slivers um, I think this is just basically going to be kind of the balance point where the number of combinations that we are re-raising the number of combinations that we're re-raising with we're going to want to balance that out with a certain percentage of the time a certain percentage of the time um, according to um, you know what we are raising with so that being said if we take a look we can certainly see here all of our offsuit combinations just go out the window they become folds um, a majority of certainly I guess probably the easiest part down here is going to be our small pocket pairs uh, certainly become um, certainly become folds uh, eights nines tens jacks you know do become uh, calls a certain a certain percent a certain percentage of the time um, and then also also re-raises I think this is kind of more more bluffy or balancing in terms of in terms of the re-raising I think that the interesting part right here though is with your suited aces you know if you truly are limiting your suited aces to ace 10 plus suited preflop uh, these do uh, these do continue these do continue in the hand so these can go ahead and call or or re-raise kind of as a, as as a semi bluff right through here, but the main thing here I just want to kind of focus on is it does force us to to reshape our range um, as opposed to the min raised min raised to forty. So it, it should have it should have that effect on what our opponent is calling with or or even even re, even re-raising even re-raising with. So let's go ahead and take a look over here, and let's go ahead and look at the raise to 120. Now this is the most infrequent because I think that the, the hands that are um, uh, let's just jump back jump back into the, the 80 here. The hands that are that are calling um, or even value raising or, or, or bluff re raising um, when we go ahead and do when we go ahead and see the raise to 120, we'll go ahead and see a look here. Yeah, basically almost all of the call. Um, almost all of the call goes out goes out the window um, and then we go ahead and basically we're left with either you are gonna fold or you're gonna go ahead and re-raise re-raise to 220 
um, re-raise re -raise back to cap. And the frequencies do change here. You know, certainly if you took time to pause and go back and forth in the video, um, you could go ahead and see kind of what those what those frequencies are. Kind of just kind of judge, you know, how far a, a raise cap goes across goes across these different these different boxes. I'm not sure that you know this exact analysis is necessarily too valuable in the live game, just because again, I don't think. Uh, many players are thinking about their ranges um, and also what the bet sizing means and, and how that interacts with the the, the opponent's range. Um, I, I definitely think a sizing of two is probably more common where they might have a min or a, you know, kind of a, a bet plus 50, bet plus 60, that's what the 80 is, and, and then they have then they have the 120, 120 cap. I think that this analysis is, you know, really oriented towards an equilibrium solution where three, ra where three raises, uh, three raising values are or three raising amounts um, are distinct possibilities, but the key the key takeaway here is you know how our ranges are shaped in response. The min raise, you know, there's really no no interaction here. Um, it looks you know almost like the range that we we start with or, or kind of kind of kind of open kind of open with. Definitely, once we get to the 80 raise, we go ahead and start to see that more combinations do more combinations do start to fold out. We do have the value raise caps here, um, and then I do also think we balance that with a certain amount of semi bluff. You know, I don't think there's anything that's a na naked bluff that's here. Maybe that king 10 might be a little might be kind of thin you know arguably sevens plus here even though this happens to a ve even though this happens to a very low frequency um, what we can what we can see here is um, you know these hands do retain equity you know given the various number of flops that can come out um, you've got a pocket pair you know ace high you know you know if somebody is raising or re-raising with um, you know an ace x suited type of combination um, it can brick it can brick the flop and they're just sitting there with ace high and you can find yourself you know basically kind of in a 70 30 75 25 position um, with good amount of equity good amount of equity going into the going into the turn that being said um, I did play hand in the exact in the in the exact session where um, I did go ahead and face um, a raise from 80 out of the small blind. It was from a player who I did acknowledge after the hand having kings, and I don't doubt that one, sing one single bit. Uh, the person is very solid in terms of their overall play. Uh, the person, um, you know, I, I think plays a, a very pure strategy when it comes to their value bets. That The value bets are almost always value bets. I don't think there's hardly any bluff that's there. Um, and, and this is pretty interesting, too. I, I did call with uh, ace-queen off. Um, the flop came out low. Um, got into a raise re-raise on the flop, um, but then an ace came out on the turn and, and bailed me out. Um, and then I got a call on the turn for 100 bet, got a call on the river for 100 bet, um, and took down, um, I think what was probably, if I remember correctly or if I read all that right, out of the top of my head, probably about maybe like a $1,100, $1,200 pot total, just because we're putting 100 bets in there after 100 bets in there after a certain point. But um, I was definitely, in terms of the solver, um, you know, definitely more out of line, um, calling with the the ace queen off. But the deck, um, the deck bailed me out there. You can see, you know, the equity edge or the equity bonus that you get from having suited combinations is is extremely valuable in having the opportunity to um, to flop flush draws, flop top pairs, so on, so on and so forth. So that's how the range the range composition um, composes itself. I'm going to switch over here real quick and kind of talk through kind of a similar analysis. Um, it, it's not quite as detailed. Um, I wanted to go through this with the three actual bet sizings to show how our range gets, how our range could prospectively get shaped in response. And go ahead, let me bring over here this other window. Okay, great. So when we go ahead and we have a similar kind of range, I'll just go to the root element. You can see again very quickly this is pretty pretty similar. It calculates out just a little bit a little bit differently. Um, if we go ahead and have a raise twenty, and then we go ahead and execute that. Now where we where there are only two options of raise to eighty or raise to one twenty, you can see the one twenty does exist to a much greater extent. Um, it orients itself towards aces um, down here with the ace wheel the ace wheel combinations, and then a little bit more with our with our um, uh, suited connector type of combinations. Certainly the raise to eighty um, is is more valuey with respect to ace king suited king queen 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 so on and so forth. If we take a look at the raise of 80, now I, this exact analysis does not have the re-raise option in it. We just wanted to see, you know, what would continue. Certainly aces and kings, if you have that, uh, that's completely 
completely valid to go ahead and re-raise, but just wanted to take a look and say, you know, what are we continuing in the hand with when there's only two options to raise? So we certainly continue um, uh, continuing some fortune or, or see a flop either via re-raise or our call with um, our suited aces. Uh, we have our suited kings through here and obviously our larger um, our larger large pocket pairs and then the higher end of the medium pocket pairs. We'll go ahead and take a look at the rate take a look at the raise of 120. We go ahead and have the same ace suited and then we have our pocket pairs, you know, our premiums, the top end of our medium pocket pairs, but then we're also dropping um, dropping our suited kings or offsuit um, and then dropping off all these other pocket pairs to a to a greater to a greater frequency. So take a, take a moment. You're welcome to scroll back and just pause pause the screens and take a look at this. But um, a different type different type of analysis um, or, or slightly different perspective when there are, are two two raises that two raises two race sizes that are there, as opposed to um, as opposed to three. I think the three is important because it shows kind of what the min raise does. Um, and again, just kind of jumping in here, you can immediately see where the min raise to 40 on the other analysis um, really didn't do much to shape the range. The, the raise to 80 certainly does go through here, and we start to drop off again. Small pocket pairs, we drop off a, a good more, a good or greater portion of the offsuit, um, and then our weaker, um, uh, uh, weaker in terms of the high card value. Um, kings, jacks, tens, we drop off the weaker suited cards, um, and then to a greater extent when we see the raise size of 120, we can start to see, um, uh, again, almost all the offsuit drops off. We even start to lose ace-king um, a certain percentage of the time. And then we drop off um, our, sm our po small pocket pairs to a greater extent. And then you can see all of our king suited goes away. And we're basically just playing for the premiums, um, the premium pocket pairs, the um, uh, high card suit, the high card value um, aces um, that are suited, um, and then kind of to the top end of the um, even the, the medium pocket pairs, which is going to be jacks and jacks and tens. So I hope some of this analysis is helpful or interesting. A little bit about some of the the play that occurred in the prior session. Um, please feel free to leave any sort of comments or shoot any questions over. Would be happy to chat. All right, best of luck.